Thank you, Jeff, for this uh, really good presentation. As far as I'm concerned, I'm uh, Remy Goguet. I'm a senior software architect uh, at Care for the data center business unit. And I'm going to explain uh, the SPDK technical implementation on the MPPA mini core. First, I will uh, recap the SPDK architecture and why we selected SPDK as, as a storage framework. Then we talk about the SPDK optimization for the mini core and the, the technical challenge to implement SPDK on our architecture. And finally, I will cover several use cases to show you the potential uh, of the SPDK on the uh, MPPA. In this slide that uh, Jeff already uh, showed you just before, we can see that, that the Coolidge architecture is really based on a multi-cluster architecture. Each cluster in the center is composed of 16 core and can be considered as an autonomous and dependent SMP system. This means that each cluster can run a specific and independent operating system. A typical example is one cluster running Linux operating system, which is dedicated to control plane and four clusters running a real-time operating system dedicated for data plane. The combination of both control plane and data plane inside a single system on chip is a key differentiator and is a, our basement of all the access core storage uh, architecture. Before entering into detail how we managed to port SPDK on uh, such an architecture, let's, like, let's have a quick recap about SPDK uh, architecture and software layer. SPDK stands for Storage Performance Development Kit and is an open source user space framework dedicated for high performance storage and in particular targeting NVMe uh, storage. It is composed of block storage protocol, basically NVMe over fabric, either Rocky or TCP, but also uh, iSCSI. It also has block storage services, also known as, as BDEV, and is uh, this is a key point to customize SPDK application. It can provide storage services like RAID, caching, cryptography, compression, and logical volume. Then you have the block storage provider, mainly NVMe, but also a provider to connect to Linux block device like IO Ring and Linux asynchronous IO, but also VirtIO. And finally, you, you have all the lower layer, the driver, mainly the NVMe driver, but also VirtIO driver. The NVMe driver has a capability to either address local NVMe device or remote ones using NVMe over fabric initiator function. On the integration part, it's, it provides uh, integration with orchestration like OpenStack Cinder or a stack like uh, Ceph, but also some tools like FIO or the old uh, CLI. Why we selected at Carre? why we selected uh, SPDK as our software uh, framework. SPDK performance is really based on concurrency, which it totally fits the mini core approach as well as the NVMe paradigm based on high number of IO queues. Basically, instead of having a context switch, we dedicate core to execute specific tasks. This way we, uh, prevent having interrupt and link and uh, we, everything is performed by pulling. There is no lock and every communication between thread will be used message passing. Uh, we will use message passing. Concerning the threading model, a thread running on a dedicated core will handle many connections and all those connections will be pulled in an asynchronous uh, way. There will no interrupt, no context switch, and a low memory overhead. Of course, we also selected 
SPDK because of the open source aspect. It's, it has continuously new features. The lastest one uh, is uh, the CNS support. The fact also that people can develop features on the Intel platform and then port it later on with MPPA with a, seamlessly is really interesting. Of course, we also benefit from integration with software orchestrator like OpenStack uh, or uh, Kubernetes. And finally, it's scalable and really efficient. The fact that it's lockless, it's based on pooling, is really important for us. And the fact that we can customize the block device layer by providing storage services like compression, deduplication, and RAID is a, has a really good advantage. If we look in more detail about this, SPDK application event framework. We can see that each core executes the same thread, and the thread is made of several components. A reactor, which is basically the scheduler that is pinned pin to, uh, to the core, which executes several polars. Polars are basically tasks running on a reactor and checking on asynchronous events. So seven can be RDMA completion queue, NVMe completion queue, TCP socket, polling, and so on. In case cross-thread communication is needed, SPDK application event framework provides events in order to communicate between threads in a lockless way. In this case, message passing is used to communicate between two threads. This is essentially used for control plane. And finally, we have IO channel. IO channel are abstraction hardware layer to uh, abstract hardware IO queues. How did we manage to run a Linux user space storage framework on an architecture like uh, Minicore, which have five cluster independent and only one in running Linux? The answer is that we have five SPDK instance in on the same system on chip. One, of course, is running Linux and is dedicated to, to control plane and exposed to exer external world. And four data plane cluster are executing one independent SPDK instance on each cluster. Note that it's not a Linux one that we have ported SPDK on this proprietary light operating system Concerning the Linux side, that's a pretty st standard SPDK that is executed on top of it in Linux user space. It relies on a PCI driver and a TCP IP or Rocky Linux kernel stack. It can share processing with another management application like Redfish, Wordfish, Support, if required. On the data plane, we have many two components, the network stack, and the storage stack. The network stack is a proprietary uh, third-party optimized stack to provide TCP IP and rocky termination. It communicates directly with Ethernet using Open Data Plane Packet Framework. And then it communicates with a data plane application, which can be either an NVMe over fabric target or initiator, either on TCP IP or working. Once NVMe over fabric command are decapsulated by the NVMe over fabric target application, they can be fed to SPDK that is running on dedicated cores. SPDK is, has been ported on, on this cluster race, and it can use a ISIL compliant library for typically erasure coding, read Solomon, and compression. It then can use the NVMe driver to directly use NVMe IO queues without any control plane involvement. Note that we have also an NVMe emulation box, which basically is a way to feed the SPDK block device, not from the network, but from the PCI side. This typical use case will be detailed later on. The wall picture 
we can see that it's complete and modular software framework based on optimized SPK for both data plane and control plane. And the fact that it's open source and we can port easily from X, some block device layer from x86 to MPPA make it really open to partners. The conclusion is that SPK on MPPA is a really optimized mini core implementation. We have multi instance SPDK implementation, five SPDK instance on these five MPPA cluster, one for Linux, mainly for control plane, but also for non accelerated protocol. Typical example is iSCSI. And four instance of SPDK running on the data plane for IOQs only. But from the external world, it's important to hide this complexity. A single SPDK, the Linux one, is seen from the external management and will behave like a proxy for configuring all the data plane SPDK instances. It's a really modular block device abstraction layer. PDEV can be fed from the network side, of course, like a, a, a NVMe over fabric target, but also from PCI using the NVMe emulation PCI interface. Or even we will see later on by intercluster communication pass. SPDK, of course, have been ported on a proprietary lightweight operating system. For this, we removed the DPDK environment abstraction layer and replaced it by open data plane environment abstraction layer. Also, we optimized the cache implementation by pipelining, which means that some core are dedicated to networking, basically TCP IP or Rocky termination stack, and other are dedicated to run SPDK block device abstraction layer. And last but not least, we have a really intercluster IO communication, mainly because we have shared memory between the clusters. We have a shared nothing approach between SPDK instance. That's really important that we don't want the SPDK to share their metadata or their structure. It will require to have complex cache current system. To, uh, to provide this shared nothing approach, the idea is to create a parallelism a bit by striping IO from the NVMe uh, over fabric or NVMe uh, origin. This means that we won't have any copy between uh, IO uh, exchange between SPDK instance, and we have zero copy as well uh, be, uh, between S Linux SPDK and, uh, and data plane SPDK. This is typically the case for iSCSI communication. Let's have a look on some specific use case. The first one is the distributed logical volume support. Having a NVMe over fabric target is good, but having the capability to add some storage services like logical volume is a really uh, an advantage. In order to not to, to have a share nothing approach between SPDK instance and to have the blob store uh, local and not sharing the uh, metadata between SPDK instance, we have to stripe the IO to different cluster. This way, we ensure that each data plane cluster manage a logical volume and a logical volume store that won't be shared with uh, other data plane cluster. This approach works seamlessly with PCI or network target interface. The fact that we have shared memory between cluster implies that we are not obliged to perform memory copy when, when communicating IO between cluster. We have zero copy on data block located in shared memory area. This shared memory can be either global memory or local cluster memory. They are all accessible by any cluster. Of course, this approach to have data plane cluster and to have striping is scalable with multi paper in PPA architecture with, with a shared memory shared over PCI. And as I previously mentioned, this multiple SPDK management is totally hidden by Linux SPDK instance, which acts as a proxy regarding our SPDK RPC. Typical figures right now is one mega IOPS 
for a logical volume in NVMe over fabric TCP target. Another use case really interesting is the capability to use the iSCSI on the Linux side to perform iSCSI HDD caching. In this case, iSCSI volume created by the Linux SPDK will be exposed to NVMe over fabric and will be cached by local NVMe SSDs. Open Cache Framework, OCF, has been ported on the SPDK data plane. NVMe IOs are striped to several data plane cluster, again to ensure that independent OCF layer do not share any metadata between clusters. We still have the raw copy on data block located, located in shared memory area between data plane and Linux. And the data plane and the Linux is performing the iSCSI initiator because this protocol cannot be accelerated easily on, uh, and parallelized easily. Latest use case, the NVMe to NVMe OF initiator. As previously mentioned, SPDK block device can be fed by network protocol, but also by PCI emula uh, NVMe emulation. The typical use case for this is to provide NVMe over fabric connectivity for bare metal cloud environment or operating system without NVMe over fabric support. This is the case for Windows, for example. Using the PCI SRIO V functionality, we are able to expose a high number of virtual functions and then high number of NVMe logical volume to a x86. Backend could be local, uh, typically uh, NVMe SSD inside the, the server that we will control using the PCI peer-to-peer -peer functionality, or all backend can be remote, typically a remote drive using the NVMe over fabric TCP or Rocky initiator. Typical figure are two mega IOPS for local backend device or one mega IOPS if we want to access address device using NVMe TCP. The conclusion is that using this uh, block device and its multi instances PDK, we, we are able to, to construct and to use several use cases and still have the high performance. If you have any question, Thank you.